Hey guys and welcome back to the Diving Squid YouTube channel. In this tutorial we're going to look at how to create a 2D active ragdoll figure. So we're going to look at how to actually create the player and then we're going to look at adding movements such as running and jumping and then we're going to add arm movement so the arm follows the mouse around and gives the ability to drag objects and hold on to things within the scene. So to start I'm going to head into a brand new Unity scene and create a new empty game object and call it player. Then create a new 2D sprite object underneath this and inside the assets folder at the bottom create a new square sprite and a new circle sprite which is what I'll be using as my stick figure sprites. Then on the new sprite we created drag in the circle as the head and add a 2D circle collider and a 2D rigid body component. Then we're going to rename this to head because our player is going to be made up of lots of separate parts and then we're going to create another new 2D sprite object but this time drag the square component in and drag it down and position it so that it looks like a chest. Again, add a rigid body 2D, but this time add a 2D box collider component. Rename this to chest and then duplicate this object and drag it down a little bit. And this is going to be our player's hips, which is what the legs will connect to. Of course, rename this to hips. And then duplicate this object and scale it so that it looks like a player's leg. This is going to be our player's left leg, so I'm going to rename this left leg. And then I'm going to duplicate this and move it over to the right so it acts as our player's right leg and again rename this right leg. Now I'm going to duplicate our leg so that we can create an upper arm because we're going to have an upper arm, lower arm and hands which we'll create later in the video. So scale it down a bit because we want it to be about half our player's arm width and rename this upper arm. And then I'm going to duplicate the upper arm that we just made and just move it to the right a little bit so that it acts as our player's lower arm. And I'm going to rename this to right lower arm. I'm going to do the exact same on the left hand side so our player has two arms. I'm going to create a left lower arm and a left upper arm. Now that we've got all our body components I'm going to select them all except the chest and to this I'm going to add a new component and it's going to be a hinge joint 2D. This is going to get all our parts connected. So again select all the hinge joint 2D components and then drag in the chest as the rigid body connected component. For our head, set some angle limits to minus 30 and 30 so it doesn't roll about everywhere. Then we're going to adjust the anchor so that our joins connect at the right parts. So move our head anchor down to the start of the body object and then our hips to the bottom of the chest object. Then I'm going to move both the legs to the bottom of our hips and then both the arms to the side of our body. Adjust these until you're happy with them. It's okay to be a little bit off and it won't matter too much. Now I'm going to select both of our lower arm components and drag in the right upper arm component to the right and the left to the left and then adjust the anchors again. Now I'm going to create a new 2D sprite object and drag in the square sprite so that I can create a simple ground platform to test our game with. And I'm going to make sure to add a box collider 2D component so that our player doesn't just fall straight through it. Now if we hit play to test it quickly, although we haven't added any movement, we'll see that initially our player does stand. But if we move the platform up and down, our player just falls. So now we're going to add a balance so that our player doesn't fall over and stands on its feet. And then after that we'll add our movement. So I'm going to select the hips object and I'm going to remove the hinge joint. And then I'm going to add a fixed joint 2D and drag in the chest so that our hips and chest are directly connected. Then I'm going to add a new C Sharp script called balance and open up inside of Visual Studio. I'm going to start by creating a public float called target rotation and then a public rigid body 2D called RB. And lastly a public float called force. Now inside of our update function I'm going to type rb.moverotation and then mathf.lerpangle and then inside this I'm going to type rb.rotation, target rotation and then force multiplied by time.fix delta time and that's all we need to get our player balancing. Save this up and head back into Unity where on our hips I'll drag the hips rigid body and add a force of 500. Now on our left and right leg I'm also going to add the same balance script to these and then inside of this I'm going to drag in our left leg to the left leg rigid body and right leg to the right leg rigid body. Add a force to both of them of something like 300 and this is all we need to get our player standing. To test this worked okay, if we hit play and move the platform around we'll see that our player doesn't fall over, he actually just stays on his feet the whole time. So that's that working, now we can work on movement. First of all I'm going to open the animation window and then I'm going to drag this into the bottom and I'm going to select the player so we can start making our walk animation. First of all though I'm going to create an idle animation and just leave this blank because we don't want the player to move then. And then I'm going to create a new clip and I'm going to call this walk. The animation part's really important to getting our player moving so pay attention. Now inside of walk I'm going to hit record and select the left leg 
and at 0 seconds I'm going to make sure the target rotation is 0, at 10 seconds I'm going to set it to 40, at 20 seconds back to 0 and at 30 seconds also 0. Now I'm going to go back to the start and select the right leg and again start at 0 but then I'm going to keep it at 0 and on the third frame I'm going to select 40 and on the last one pitch it back to 0. Now I'm going to do the exact same but make the 40 negative 40 and I'm going to call the animation walk back. So now I'm going to do the exact same by hitting record and selecting the player and then on the left leg initially 0 for the second frame it's going to be minus 40 for the third frame it's going to be 0 and then the last frame also 0. The exact same for the right leg at the start it's going to be 0 the second frame this time is still going to be 0 the third frame will be minus 40 and the last frame will be 0 again. That's all for the animations as this tutorial doesn't require any animation transitions, just scripts. So in our player object I'm going to create a new player controller script and open this up inside of Visual Studio. So to start with in our start function I'm going to set a new collider 2D collider equal to transform dot get component in children and then collider 2D so that it gets our collider component. Then I'm going to create a for loop by typing for and then double tapping the tab bar and then instead of length I'm going to type collider.length. And then I'm going to create a new for loop and inside of this is going to be what stops our player from colliding with other players and messing up our whole movement script and balance. So once we've typed in this for loop, inside of this I'm going to type physics2d.ignoreCollision, colliders i and then colliders k. That's going to get our player's collisions working well and then now we're going to work on our movement. So I'm going to create a few variables for this, a public animator called anim, a public rigid body 2D called RB, and then a public float called jump force. Now I'm going to create a public float called player speed, and then a public vector 2, and then call this jump height. The actual movement code will be quite similar to what I use in my 2D platformer controller series, so if you want to check that out for a detailed description, then check that out, it'll be in the description. Lastly, I'm going to create a public transform called player pause. Now I'm going to create a new if statement inside of our update function stating if input.getX is raw horizontal doesn't equal zero and then inside of this we're going to create another if statement stating if input.getX is raw horizontal and then if our input is greater than zero we want to move our player by setting anim.play walk and then we're going to type rb.addForce vector2.write multiplied by player speed. Now if our player is moving left we want to do the same thing but walk the other way so we're going to type anim.play walk back and then we're going to type rb.addForce vector2.left multiplied by player speed. We're going to create one last else statement so that if our player is not moving he goes back to his idle animation so we're going to type anim.play idle. Now to get our player jumping I'm going to start by typing is on ground and then going to set it equal to physics2d.overlap circle and then player pause dot position and then position radius and then ground. Now inside of our function I'm going to type if is on ground equals equals true and and input dot get key down and then whatever key you want the player to press I'm going to pick space and I'm going to debug dot log jumping but you don't have to type this line and then I'm going to type rb dot add force vector two dot up multiplied by jump force. Save this and head back into unity we're on our player you'll see we have a number of variables we need to assign. So I'm going to drag our players animator and then our hips rigid body into the RB slot. I'm going to give something like a jump force of 2500 and a player speed of something like 50. For the jump height we're going to leave that at B and then we're going to set a position radius of something like 0 0.3. Now we need to create the player pause game object so create an empty object under our hips component and call this player pause. I'm going to give it a gizmo so I can see it in the scene. I'm going to drag it to below our player's feet. It's important to be quite well below the player's feet so that it actually registers the ground and then drag this into the player pause transform on our player controller script. We also need to create a new ground layer so that we can recognize the ground and jump whenever we're on it. So I'm going to create a new layer called ground and remember to actually assign our ground game object the relayer ground so that it picks it up in the game. And then back on our player we're going to set our ground equal to ground. So now if we hit play to test this out, we'll see that if we use left and right, we can actually move. This may need some adjusting, as you can see. But what we also need to do is multiply our speeds by time dot delta time so that it runs well on all devices. So I'm going to quickly head back to the player controller script 
and update it by typing multiply by time dot delta time. And I'm going to copy this into each of our vector2 variables that we make for jumping and running. Save this and head back into Unity. I find that when I use time dot delta time I need to increase the variables quite a lot, so you may need to play around with that. But now we're going to select our head and the angle limits we set earlier, we're going to check use limits so that our head doesn't roll around everywhere. And I'm happy with how the controls feel so I'm going to leave it at that, but make sure you play around until you're happy. Now I'm going to work on the grabbing section, so I'm going to create a new C -sharp script and I'm going to call this arms. And I'm going to open it up inside of Visual Studio where I'm going to create an integer called speed and set it initially to 300 and a public rigid body called RB. Then a public camera called cam and then a public key code called mouse button. Inside of an update function, I'm going to set vector 3 dot player pause equal to new vector 3 and then cam dot screen to world point input dot mouse position and then outside of the brackets dot x then the exact same for the y axis cam dot screen to world point and then input dot mouse position and then outside of the brackets dot y and then we're going to type 0 of course now I'm going to create a new vector 3 and I'm going to call this difference and I'm going to set this equal to player pause minus transform dot position and then I'm going to create a float called rotation z and I'm going to type mathf dot atan to difference dot x negative difference dot y multiplied by mathf dot rad to deg now I'm going to create an if statement typing if input dot get key down mouse button and I'm going to type rb dot move rotation mathf dot lerp angle rb dot rotation rotation z and then speed multiplied by time dot fix delta time Back in Unity on all our ARM components, I'm going to drag in our ARM script and then drag in the main camera to all of them. Now on our right arms, I'm going to select mouse button 0 and then on our left arms, I'm going to select mouse button 1. Then we, I'm going to drag in all the corresponding rigid bodies to each of them individually. I actually think I want the left mouse button to be controlling the left arm and the right mouse button to control the right arm, so I'm going to actually swap them around from what I just set them to. You don't have to do this, it's all personal preference. For the left arm, we're going to get some weird inverted motion, so what we're going to do is select them both and then change the rotation to minus 90, but then that means that we also have to negate our hinge joint, so I'm going to just change this to 0 0.48 and that should be it fixed. If we hit play and test this out and hold down our mouse button and move the mouse around the screen, we'll see that the arm follows and if I do it with the other mouse button, the other arm follows. You can also do this holding both at the same time and it works perfectly well. You could take this off if you only wanted to be able to use one arm, it's up to you. Now I'm going to work on grabbing, so I'm going to add a new empty game object to the player called left hand and I'm going to drag this to the end of my hand. I'm going to add a rigid body 2D component and a circle collider which I'm going to adjust the radius so that it's about the same size as my hand. Then add a hinge joint 2D component and make sure this lines up with the arm and then drag in the lower left arm. Duplicate this and move it to the right hand side and make sure to drag in the lower right arm and change the name to right hand so that it connects well with the body. Make sure this lines up and then I'm going to add a new script to both of our hands called grab. Open this up inside of Visual Studio and start by creating a private bool called hold and then a public key code called mouse button. Now instead of an update function, I'm going to type if input.getKey and then our mouse button and I'm going to set hold equal to true, otherwise hold will be false. And we're going to destroy the fixed joint 2D component we're about to create. So now I'm going to create a private on collision enter 2D and inside this, if we're holding our object, I'm going to set rigid body 2D RB equal to collider.transform.getComponent rigid body 2D. Now if our rigid body is null, then I'm going to set our fixed joint equal to transform.gameObject.addComponent type of fixed joint 2D as fixed joint. I'm going to type fixed joint.connectedBody equal to rigid body. This is going to connect the object we're trying to pick up to our player's hand temporarily. And then of course when we let go it will delete the fixed joint. Now back in Unity I'm going to add a mouse button. So for the left hand it's going to be mouse button 0 and for the right hand it's going to be mouse button 1 which corresponds with the things that we use to make the arms rotate. I'm going to create a new box to test this out by adding a rigid body 2D component and a box collider 2D. Make sure to give it a sprite and scale it up to a good size so that your player can reach it. And then if you hit play to test this out, 
and try reaching your arm in the direction of the box, you'll see that the player can pick up the box and throw it round, and if you let go of your mouse button, it'll throw the box. I think this works really nicely and has a really good feel to it, and you can make many other objects such as chains, swings, and anything you can think of, and the player can hold it. This is an example of a chain, I'm not going to go over this in this tutorial, but it's not that difficult to make. All you need to do is create a static rigid body and then connect the first chain link to that like this. As you can see I've got my main object and then under this a chain that has a kinematic rigid body to it and then the rest of the chains have dynamic rigid bodies and hinge joints which connect to the one above it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have a working ragdoll figure. Don't forget to subscribe and if you want to check out my Patreon the link is in the description. Also if you want to check out my new Discord server the link will also be in the description below. It's been growing a lot recently and has gained over 80 members over a few days. Don't forget to subscribe guys and thank you very much for watching. See ya!